Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching India Fights Back with your host Kriti Mishra. Union Health Ministry has come out with a protocol for management of COVID-19 in the pediatric age group. The ministry said children with COVID-19 infection may be asymptomatic, mildly symptomatic, moderately sick, or with severe illness. As per the protocol, asymptomatic children are usually identified while screening if family members are identified. Such children do not require any treatment except monitoring for development of symptoms and subsequent treatment according to assessed severity. Children with mild disease may have sore throat, cough, with no breathing difficulty, and few children may have gastrointestinal symptoms also. As per the protocol, these children can be managed at home with home isolation and symptomatic treatment. There should be regular communication with the doctor or healthcare giver. And as a parent, what are the things that you need to keep in mind? Let's find out from our eminent panelists. Joining me on the program, Dr. Shobhna Gupta, CMO, Department of Pediatric, Sabdar Jang Hospital, and Dr. Shivani Deswal, Senior Consultant, Pediatric Gastroenterology, Medanta Medicity, Gurgaon. Welcome to Atsapa Television, both of you. Thank you. And Dr. Shobhna Gupta, coming to you first, how is India's second wave different from the first wave specifically for children? Yeah. Hello, Kriti. Uh, as you have already, you know, given the uh, pre-introduction about the how this wave is differing. So we, I will come specifically to the children at this point. Uh, as you know, last year also we have the cases, but uh, we heard cases mostly about the adults, that too in the elderly population. But contrary to the last wave, if you hear this wave, we have uh, the cases are being there, the COVID cases are positive and symptomatic in every age group, including the adolescent, young people, as well as the elderly. So this uh, wave is affecting all the people equally re with regard to the, if I talk about the percentages, as per the data is released, if you say there is a mild increase in the overall percentage, if you say last year it was, uh, uh, if I talk about the children of 0 to 18 years of age group, Last year, as per the data released by the ICMR, it was around 4.8%. And this year, they have told, uh, little last month, it was 5.2%. But there is a difference that last year, whatever the cases were done, they were mostly asymptomatic. They were tested because either someone in the family was positive or the child has uh, probably, you know, it was more of a contract tracing. And very few children were sick, less than 0.1%. But this year, when they, the, out of this 5.2%, uh, the symptoms in the children have dramatically increased. Most of the children are presenting with, uh, with fever, high-grade fever for the initial three to four days at least. So most of the children who are coming, uh, they are presenting with fever with upper respiratory tract infections. However, in last week, they were totally asymptomatic, no fever also. So that was one difference. And out of these also, obviously, when you have some symptoms, so uh, one to there is a chance of, you know, one, one to five percent of children becoming sick. So we are having the, uh, these children out of these, some of the children around one percent are becoming sick and they are getting admitted to the intensive care units, even are hospitalized. So that way it has affected the severity of the, the spectrum of the disease has increased that it is affecting every age group and the severity of the symptoms have also increased. Initially, it was mainly restricted to the upper respiratory tract infection like cough, cold, mild uh, cold. But this time, it is also going infecting, uh, uh, developing into the severe infection like pneumonia. It is infecting the lungs and there are widespread of symptoms like uh, gastrointestinal tract. There is loose motions, vomiting, diarrhea is coming very commonly, even headache. So the, definitely, there is a major shift in the uh, how the child is presenting to us in the severity. All right, Dr. Deswal, a lot of people also have this question that how susceptible are babies, infants and toddlers to this virus? See, nobody's immune. Children of all ages are susceptible to COVID. We have got getting even neonates with COVID positivity. So as per the world data, around 1 to 5% of cases are children. And according to, we don't have much of an Indian data, but whatever the Tamil Nadu study showed us, it showed that around 5.6% of the children were affected. The majority of the children were the in age group of 6 to 12 years, prob probably because they were the ones moving out. But now with the new upsurge, we are getting infants, toddlers, all coming to us. 
the reason may be because uh, covid protective behavior is difficult to maintain in less than 2 years they don't wear a mask they hug more to the adults you know kissing and you know uh, keeping them close to them so probably they are also manifesting this time with so i would say no age is immune all children yeah all right you made a very important point about social distancing or physical distancing mandates or norms dr gupta how do we ensure as parents that our children observe social distancing mandates of course it's a very difficult task what is your message to the parents out there yes see that is the very important you know the main reason for the upsurge in all the age groups is the our fatigue and incompetent behavior we became a little fatigue and we did not follow the covid appropriate behavior that's one thing and secondly we allowed uh, uh, you know the children were also going out and they are mixing with the adults so it was both way transmission the children were getting the disease from the adults as well as adults are getting from the children so now it has become a two way now to uh, important is to prevent the transmission of the disease that is important so for that prevention of transmission as a family as a society everybody has to follow once there once there is a transmission of virus in the society is high everybody becomes prone to get the virus right so if the family the parents are following the behavior covid appropriate behavior the child is is always a you know silent observer he does exactly what the adults the siblings the elder siblings they are doing in the family so if they are following the covid appropriate and anything you know just saying one thing that you do this thing children won't follow so right. if the parents are when they are going out they make it uh, make it a point to oh, you know wear a mask maintain a social distancing so because now it is well proven that it is mainly airborne for mice does not carry a lot of you know as previously last year everybody was you know washing washing for mite so now it is well proven that it is mainly the airborne infection so we have to avoid the closed air setting like sitting in a single small room closed room lot of people that should not be done eating together okay so the children should be advised even if they are going to play see uh, right now everybody is Well, at home right but once you know these restrictions will be open again there will be a uh, fear of you know again the same upsurge so they should be known that what not to do so what comes in the covid appropriate behavior one is definitely mask has been proven to be the most appropriate measure but again in less than 5 years it is not an easy task to you know always make them wear a mask even who says that less than 5 years age they, and less than 2 years so it is totally we don't ask them to you know wear a mask because it is difficult for them secondly there are risk they, that if they do not wear properly they could pro- land it in problem so that thing so it has to be under supervision of the parents that how to wear it secondly about social distancing as i said children should be taught even if they are playing they should avoid you know touching each other avoid eating with each other like even if they are going to school or if they are uh, sitting with other children because once you are have, uh, having food or tea with each other you are going to remove your protective mask or you are going and there is aerosol generation so that is the most important point in spread of the virus when they sit together eat together that to in a closed room ac room without ventilation so even when they are playing it should be open in the park should not come too much close to each other definitely washing hands remain important throughout no doubt about it because uh, once they you know children are in a habit of frequently touching their mouth nose right so if they are, even if they are sneezing or something so they have in a habit of touching uh, this so if they are uh, that uh, washing of the hands especially when they are going out coming in and uh, you know having food so that whenever they are removing mask so at least those things otherwise if you say a child you no know, keep on washing hand he will even you know children were coming to us with irritant there was a allergic reaction of the hands they were yeah. using so much of sanitizer so they should be taught the points the entry point and the exit point when to do it so that can be done gradually parents have to imbibe them in their behavior if they are going in a marriage or in a function if if it all how to maintain that behavior covid appropriate maintaining a, a adequate distance even if eating a little you know uh, different from others uh, masking and very important if any child for this is actually for the parents if any child is showing any symptom of fever the you know parents are in a uh, mode of denial kisko to har bar hota hi hai isko to har saal hi problem hoti hai it is normal for him normal bronchitis so to accept that whenever a pandemic is going on any fever any symptom cannot be ignored 
because child might not show any symptom but any member of the family and as you're seeing in this wave you know last year we used to say that grandparents can be affected and you are seeing in this way even a 25 year old 40 year old they are showing a very severe disease so you don't know out of a family of six which member is showing which response covid may the biggest problem is that you cannot interpret that this person would be asymptomatic this person would be you know much more severe so that is very very important for children to follow that if any child is symptomatic any fever that that child should not be allowed to go out either child along with one of the parent the child is very small suppose two year three years obviously you cannot isolate a child so either of the parent can remain isolated with the child along with the mask and they should not allow child to intermingle with other members of the family and definitely medical supervision is really important so that you know when to you know uh, take place uh, as i said initially that the how is it differing initially there is a fever of 3 to 4 days right so most of the children remain better but again a word of caution for the parents if the child is again showing symptom at day 7 to 10 of illness day 7 to 9 that is the critical period please yes. please yes. take a medical supervision it might be a you know severity of the disease so you don't have to neglect or ignore that period and you need uh, to talk to your doctor regarding that dr gupta you made very very important points there and of course very useful tips for the parents but talking about pregnant and lactating women first let's talk about lactating women dr deswal if a mother is diagnosed with corona virus she is positive or she has mild case of it can she still breastfeed that is the question that lot of ladies ask see as far as the current evidence goes breast milk has not found to be the source of infection for covid and it has lot of protective factors and antibodies that can protect a child from infection so if the mother is positive she can continue breastfeeding but she must take few precautions the precautions are she should first wash always her hands with soap and water before touching the baby or a hand sanitizer with alcohol more than 60% secondly she should wear a double mask but by double mask we mean a surgical mask followed by a cloth mask on top of it to prevent transmission to the baby and thirdly if she is expressing the breast milk then the proper cleaning and sanitization of the breast pump is also very important but if the mother is very feeling very uncomfortable or she is not in a state to breastfeed she can probably and uh, she can probably express her breast milk and give it to the caregiver who is the uh, healthiest in the family a young adult you know who can feed the baby with proper precautions in a separate room so that is another option that she could do all right and talking about pregnant women dr gupta yeah yeah, yeah i would uh, like to add on this uh, yes, experience in the subject a point Yeah, yeah. Whatever she, Doctor Shivani said, I just want to add a point. Like in Subdivision, we have a lot of females uh, being delivered who are COVID positive, and we are uh, all the babies are kept with the mother and they are breastfeeding well. And none of the baby had become sick because of the breastfeeding. In fact, the antibodies in the mother are protecting. So we are doing it even from the last year, and the results are really good, uh, and it's worldwide proven. So breastfeeding definitely should always be promoted and to be given to the baby. at least there's some ray of hope there when you're talking about breast milk but uh, dr gupta also talking about pregnant women now this is again a very common query that if a lady is pregnant and she turns positive covid positive will it be passed to her child see uh, yeah coming to that point if see uh, it depends when the mother had become positive if the mother has become positive uh, during the you know timing of delivery suppose a week before delivery or in and around delivery then there is around 8 to 10% of the chance that the child who will be delivered he might be covid positive but again how the child has become covid positive uh, it could be three passages it could be you know during the birth process itself uh, it could be you know immediate postnatal period when the mother is taking the baby or even from the healthcare infection from the hospital where the child is born but there is just 8 to 10% of the chance that out of the 100 covid positive mothers delivered around 8 to 10 babies will come out to be positive but it has been seen that even when the baby comes out to be positive right at birth those babies are mostly asymptomatic like we have around uh, 250 mothers have delivered so far in our hospital more than 250 plus so none of the newborn who have come positive became sick and they became negative after 6 uh, to 7 days when we follow up and uh, so even if the baby is positive they remain asymptomatic okay so there are very very few reports where the baby has actually you know reported symptoms 
All right, all right. And talking about uh, recovery, Dr. Deswar, does it take the same period of recovery time for adults and babies for coronavirus? What are the studies saying? See, recovery period is usually the same. It has been seen that 10 days from the symptom onset and no fever for three days is taken as a time that where we can stop home isolation. So 10 days from symptom onset with no fever for more than three days without using antipyretics is now a clear indication to stop home isolation. Uh, you don't even need a retesting before doing that. But we must remember that in immunocompromised children, the, you know, the recovery could be delayed and they could remain positive for up to 20 days. So for immunocompromised, a 20-day home isolation would be better. And we must remember that it's not only about recovery. The major problem that we are facing with children now is the delayed immune response which we call multi-system inflammatory syndrome, which children are presenting at the end of second week or at the beginning of the third week. So the parents must be aware that if a fever reoccurs, once the child is uh, afebrile for seven to 10 days and the fever reoccurs, it's high grade, more than 100. The child is having a conjunctivitis, child is having a strawberry tongue, he's having some rashes or again a development of vomiting and loose stools. So these are all warning signs and red flag signs for multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Child needs earliest evaluation by a doctor, by a pediatrician, so that they can be picked up because the response to steroids is very good in these children. So the prognosis is good, but early detection is the most important part. Absolutely, early detection is the most important part. But there's another important aspect, Dr. Gupta. What about children with underlying comorbid conditions like heart disease, chronic lung disease, chronic organ dysfunction or obesity? Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, the children who are having with chronic diseases, like you said, uh, even the leukemia children, may, many are coming positive. So uh, leukemia, chronic renal disease, chronic liver disease, they are bound to become more, they have a chance of becoming more positive. You know, the, when the children are admitted, when they are admitted, they are no, negative. But because their treatment is prolonged, they come out to be positive during the course of their treatment. So definitely they are at much increased risk for getting the infection and they remain, uh, the infection could be severe in them and they remain positive for a longer time. So these children, even if initially they present with mild symptoms like low grade fever or cough coriza, it would be better if possible to hospitalize them and uh, they require a supervision because they, uh, it's uh, they need a supervision actually because of this multi, already they are, you know, their organs are compromised. So anytime they can deteriorate. So in that, those cases, uh, even with mild cases, hospitalization is a better plan. All right. Dr. Deswal, what are your tips to the parents out there for building their child's immunity at home? See, building up immunity process starts from birth. Breastfeeding is the primary source that we say, which starts with your immunity building. But during the COVID times, I think the most important is to avoid talking too much about COVID in the family. Okay. Uh, Every child does not perceive your information because he perceives it according to his level of understanding. So with an adolescent, probably you could discuss in detail, but with a younger child or a toddler, they need to be taught in ways of playing that how mask is good, how we are fighting the corona, how we are winners, you know, things like that. Because mental health of children at this time is very important. They're sitting at home for last one year. And mm -hmm. fixed schedule, like sleep time should be fixed, Getting up time in the morning should be fixed. Afternoon nap is a must so that their body relaxes. Secondly, yoga, pranayam, you know, uh, deep breathing exercises. If we can teach our toddlers and the elder children, it is really helpful. Then some stretching or physical activity at home, whatever they can help in the home, you know, they, it should be encouraged. Then, you know, fix meal times. All right, so maintain the hygiene, avoid antibiotics, and of course, eat the rainbow. Those are very important tips. But you also made a very important point about mental health. Dr. Gupta, that is another area of concern for children. Yes, definitely. definitely. You know, this has emerged as a very, very area of important of uh, concern. And, uh, you know, many papers, in fact, have been published worldwide that how COVID is actually uh, affecting the psychosocial, what it has having a psychosocial impact on the children. So children are presenting, and in different age groups, it is presenting as different. The most affected, definitely, I would say, are the teenagers in the, and the adolescents, which feel like they have been caged. 
and you know that uh, feeling of liberty has gone and they are presenting with a violent behavior uh, you know that attention uh, uh, seeking behavior and you know the lot of uh, screen glowing you know addiction to screen time so this has come in the little older children however younger children they again having a you know a lot of uh, problems like if it, so parents have a big big role in playing you know most of the families which are nuclear especially so children don't get to interact with you know their peer group so it's very difficult for them to you know keep uh, they are mostly glued to the tv or the screen so as uh, dr shivani you know highlighted the importance of the proper routine the parents should follow they should you know they can follow a time table or a routine it's not necessarily like a school time table which you have to follow hour by hour but mm-hmm. it has to be the children need to be engaged in some uh, you know creative activity as per their age like the smaller children 3 year old 4 year old so you need to bring more uh, you know games or creative you know art or thing which you know which can attract it attract him however a little uh, older age group can be you know motivated to you know do a dance or even uh, you know instruments like yoga yeah, like guitar and everything and mind you uh, regarding the exercise if i say to say to my child do yoga you know he won't be so it's always when what a family does together what a family the child will always do when a family does together like we in our in our house we all you know my two children we have to you know start first we started doing yoga gradually children were attracted to it they might not be doing for an hour or you know one and a half hour but they are at least doing for you know they have small small targets can be given positive motivation can be given if you do not do this you will be you have to you know bring a chart you can make a chart for them you know how your growth is going so you have to motivate them in which way they get motivated and it's every time i would say whether it's a food whether it's a diet or an exercise it's the family which does it together so it runs in the family obesity runs in the family similarly the fitness mantra that runs in the family so if the parents are supportive and they are doing it child will definitely going to follow it so it has to be more interaction and communication that is the, always the key absolutely so the parents have to inspire their children but before we end this conversation uh, dr deswal you were also talking about the importance of telemedicine during these unprecedented times yes uh, we are doing regular telemedicines in fact we are doing even emergency video consults and i think it is really help, helping the parents and the children to come and rush to the hospital and avoiding hospital uh, emergency rush secondly it is also preventing them from catching covid from high risk areas so and uh, thirdly i think on a video consult most of the warning signs in a child you can make out like a sunken eye or a rash or a conjunctival congestion you know even the you can reassure the family that you've seen the child and you know he is looking preferable uh, okay he can be managed at home you could check their medications what dose are they giving which concentration syrup are they using because sometimes there can be a mistake so i think a video consult is the way to go at present times 80% of children are mild cases still it's a good sign that 80% are still mild so if given the appropriate a counseling to the parent and the caregiver along with st- looking at the child you know you can make a good assessment that which child needs to come to the hospital to get tested and which how- child can remain you can even teach them how to use the pulse oximeter you know how to monitor the temperature where to put the thermometer so these are very basic things which i feel through video consult we are being able to convey to parents how to use the thermometer how to use the pulse ox how to monitor the temperature how not to panic some children are waking their children at night and making them do a prone position it is that level of panic that parents are having so you have to tell them that don't disturb let the child sleep monitor spo2 only 6 hourly if the spo2 you know monitor if it's not put a child's finger is loose it will give wrong readings so they don't need to panic there are other signs that you can look up to you can look at his lips you can look at his tongue whether it's blue whether it's pink is there accessory muscle use is the nose flaring you know is the respiratory distress is happening so you know it's just i think the video consult we can really give a good picture to the child we can counsel the parents reassure them and of course advise test at the right moment and avoid unnecessarily use of antibiotics and supplements which are causing side effects so that's most important yeah uh, one thing i would like to uh, add three parents are doing your going 
for the CT CT chest of the child without no, the no, need no. and without the consent of the doctor. So please don't do that. CT scan carry a lot of radiation. First counsel, you always you know uh, refer to a pediatrician. If he only feels that it is required, then only go for it. So in fact, in most of the cases, we even haven't had an X-ray. We don't even need an X-ray in most of the cases unless the SpO2 is you know less than ninety four percent and the child is having respiratory distress. Even X-ray is not warranted. So please don't go for self reliant investigations and you know self prescriptions in children. That is not warranted actually. Totally agree. And I think we should take over as the pediatricians. We are living in societies which are like eleven hundred houses. So you know one uh, they may have two or three pediatricians in every society. So it is time to you know get together and probably all society children. If you are managing, you know where you know how you are dealing. If there is an emergency, you can even they are accessible to you also. So I think it's high time that we all doctors take it in our hand as individual workers. Apart from of course our hospital duties, which are nine to six. And our COVID duties, but I think it's very important to connect and decrease that panic, and to reassure the parents at any time of the day. So we are now available on video consult like twenty four seven at the moment. Absolutely. So panic is not the solution, and of course, this is the biggest point that we have to remember at this point in time that we have to rely on medical advice only. On that yes. note, thank you so much for joining us and answering all those important queries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of India Fights Back. But before that, let me remind you once again to stay safe from the coronavirus pandemic. Remember to wear a face mask and wash your hands and face regularly, and ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you are stepping outside. These are simple precautions. All that it takes to defeat the pandemic. Take care. Goodbye.